well, as I speak, and uh, this is September 2022, to the best of my knowledge, there has not as yet been written a well-researched, uh, well-documented, well-annotated, full history of the territories, the terries, as they were often nicknamed in Malta during the period, shall we say, between the 1950s and the 1980s. So uh, it is always hard to give yes and no answers to that type of question. But the fact was that uh, from this distance, as I see it, um, I consider the territorials, the territorial army, as it then was in Malta with three regiments originally, um, uh, as having been a factor which, uh, in societal terms, did, I will not say must have had, I will categorically say, did have an effect on uh, society in Malta. In the sense that an important component of society, um, uh, which is basically the 16 to uh, 20, 25 year olds, um, often felt it um, the thing to do. Uh, uh, the British used the word fad to join the territorial army in Malta. And uh, many young people joined the three territorial army regiments as then existed in Malta. Basically, the first King's Own Malta Regiment, the 11th Heavy Anti-Aircraft Regiment, and the uh, 3rd Light Anti-Aircraft Regiment. Um, they joined these, and uh, the army always has a, uh, a leveling off effect on everybody who joins it, at least in its in the early uh, in the initial uh, ranks in the uh, non-commissioned ranks. In the non-commissioned ranks, the army has a, a very good leveling off effect. So my answer to your question would be yes. The army in Malta did have uh, the territorial army in Malta did have an important effect. It was an attraction for people who would be in the 16 to 20 age group to join. Uh, many of them would be either in their first jobs um, uh, or else in the sixth form or preparing to, entry, to entering tertiary education at university. And they would all look upon the TAs as something to do and enjoy, to do and enjoy collectively with others. And this is important in terms of um, societal groupings. The territorials never looked at class. The territorials never looked at place of origin. The territorials never looked at family connections. Um, what your father did, which part of Malta you came from, um, whether you were uh, coming from a family of professional people or people who uh, were tradesmen or businessmen or what have you, um, the territorial army would consider you just like everybody else. And uh, there, were a there were basic rules, there were initial courses which individuals would be required to follow. And uh, the wonderful thing, of course, about it was that many people who entered the territorial army with, in fact, nothing by way of a trade background or a professional background. These were all um, uh, inculcated, trained, um, uh, and uh, learned the rules of uh, military life very quickly. These rules were simple in reality. You respected hierarchy. You respected basic rules for living well, things like cleanliness, things like obedience, things like punctuality, um, uh, these and other rules, uh, individuals who sometimes it must also be added um, came from families uh, were perhaps through, through unemployment, through 
con situations of poverty. Um, uh, they probably did not have the opportunity, or let's say even the time, to inculcate into their children these elements of society. But the army took care of that. It trained everybody, it trained everybody fairly, equally, and to an equal, common, basic standard of professionality. Of course, there would be individuals who would seek to rise above that level of professionality, and they moved on from gunners or privates. They would become uh, um, uh, lance corporals or lance bombardiers, uh, sergeants, petty officers, non-commissioned officers. Some even obtained commissions and became officers. And that was all wonderful. I would say respect to authority. Respect to authority um, uh, was inculcated from the lowest to the highest levels. Um, you realized that orders were given, always given, with a purpose. Whether it was the case of, a, uh, of one's participation in a regimental parade, in a national parade, and the army, the territorial army, was always very conspicuous on days, on national days, um, or even things like Queen's Birthday, or Empire Day, or, or, or other events like this. And uh, you realize that respect to authority and obedience um, was a basic requirement, which very often um, served individuals well. And also, of course, it served the overall purpose of having a force that was productive, that was efficient, that was clean and welcome, welcomed, I would say, by the whole of society. Oh, practical benefits uh, there were by the dozens. Um, uh, practical benefits to individuals, practical benefits to the army itself, to the territorial army itself, and practical benefits to the whole of society. Of the latter, I have already uh, spoken. But practical benefits to the individual would be that he would become um, uh, aware of the sense of organization. You belong to a troop. You belong to a battery. You belong to a regiment. You belong to an organized uh, military force. Um, uh, Practical benefits in the sense that individuals learned trades. Practical benefits that individuals took care of their, of their health, participated in sport, and sport was very important in the territorial army. Um, the, the, I am very proud to say that, that in the sport which I practiced, I was uh, keen and very good, modestly speaking, very good at table tennis, and uh, I still hold with great pride my British Army colors in my sport. What that meant was that whenever the Navy versus Army versus Air Force annual competitions in all sports, and in the case of table tennis, a signal would leave Whitehall in London, which is the head of the uh, British Army, would go to HQ troops in Castile in, in Malta, and HQ troops would relay it on to our regiment, to my regiment, the third eleventh, third third eleventh, eventually, because in 1966 an amalgamation took place, um, for the regimental table tennis player, for the regiment table tennis player to represent the British Army. Invariably, we won that tournament, I, and I'm still very proud of that, and still very proud of those colours. But sport was only one example. Uh, uh, my colleagues participated in competitions. Uh, like uh, culinary, cooking competitions, competitions in, in, uh, uh, in uh, rifle shooting, uh, competition in athletics. You know, th there were many, many virtues, many, many, many benefits, which uh, uh, so many people, and I say so many people because uh, regiments were usually uh, between anything between uh, on the conservative side, 250 people. Sometimes you would get a regiment rising up to as much as 500 people. So there you are. 
you had at least 1,500 young men and elders, because uh, perhaps I'm overemphasizing the young people. Elders were there too. Many would stay in the territorial armies for years. I spent 17 years myself. Others spent more than me. And uh, many people, in fact, um, uh, were in their 40s and 50s and even 60s when they left the territorial army. That is very correct. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, you, got, you would get people from Slima becoming friends with people from Birzabuja, people they wouldn't have known had they not, in fact, joined the, the, the territories. Um, uh, uh, the normal uh, division of a regiment would be, in the case of the artillery companies, in the case of the, of the, um, in the case of the infantry companies, in the case of the artillery um, batteries, so in Third Eleventh Regiment, for example, you had 15 battery, 22 battery, and 30 battery. 15 battery was usually made up of many people who came from the northern part of Malta, so people from Slema, Melleja, Saint Paul's Bay, and Gozo would be uh, in 15 battery. In 22 battery, you would get people from the center of Malta, from, uh, from uh, the three cities, uh, from Cotolera. Um, and in 30 batteries, you got people from the, from the lower part of Malta. We used to refer it as the Birid Dep uh, battery. And uh, all these people would get to know each other, would get to know each other very, very well. Um, uh, uh, they would be living uh, part of the year, for example, annual camps. Annual camps were very important. Weekend camps were very important. Daily uh, evening drills uh, during the week were very important. So you spend a lot of time with people who came from various parts of Malta. You get to know them well. And you know, the intermingling, the societal leveling off, the friendship being inculcated, this had a very, very positive effect on the people of our society. I would say a sense of duty. A sense of duty. You did something and you tried to do it well. Why? Because very quickly it would be inculcated into you that very often the difference between doing something and doing it well, just doing it, but also doing it well, the difference is very small. So you might as well do it well. Of course, people who were skivers, who used to try to escape from working. They were very easily and quickly singled out. They were very easily caught up. And this duty of realizing that if it's worth doing, it's worth doing well, this becomes a part of an individual's character. It helps him as an individual. It helps his pocket because uh, he gets m more occasion to, to attend to duties, to be selected for camps, to be selected for promotion, and earn more money. Um, but money wasn't the only thing. Of course, people who were young students, normally not paid, there was no such thing as a stipend, as a student stipend in, in our time. Um, they would welcome the opportunity of earning good money, for example, at annual camps, where individuals would get the pay of their rank, their trades bank, an annual bounty, um, uh, advance party duties, uh, f f payments, uh, uh, after camp duties payments. There was a lot of opportunity for earning money, and young people welcomed that, plus, of course, the training and the learning of skills.
Well, uh, as I said at the beginning of the, in my answer to the first question, a full uh, history, and when I say a full history, I mean uh, warts and all. Um, uh, I know I may have been sounding like I am all praises for the TAs. Were there any faults? Possibly, yes. And I am sure that a, uh, uh, an enthusiastic, keen, and objective uh, researcher would be able to pinpoint these faults. But the fact remains that when one compares the situation of those times to today, we are not comparing like with like. Times are totally different. The youths and the young men and uh, the people of uh, the 1950s to 1980s lived in a different age. Um, uh, discipline was important. Um, uh, obedience was important. Today, discipline has relaxed. People are um, uh, uh, perhaps want, want the, 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 the solutions to their problems quick. And of course, there are today many other um, uh, temptations in life. Uh, we hardly knew or spoke about things like uh, drugs in those times. And uh, today it is very easy for a young man to find himself in bad company, bad influence, um, uh, temptations of all sorts. And he must, he must have a very good character and a very good upbringing to make sure that uh, he doesn't fall into some of these uh, temptations. The reserve force experiment may not have been successful in Malta. Um, uh, some say that there is a need for um, f a form of uh, um, leva, uh, national service in Malta. I am sure that if there were to be some sort of law requiring everybody between the age of 16 and 25 to at least attend an annual summer camp requiring by law. That, that in itself, even though it could only be of a maximum, I would say, not more than, than, than three weeks, five weeks, or what have you, um, that would have a positive effect. But of course, who am I to judge and who am I to say um, whether uh, it would have the same sort of definitely beneficial effect on society that the territorial army as existing during uh, my youth did in fact have on the young people of Malta.